Today on Hack the Fish, we're going to talk about skipjack herring, the basics of what you need to catch them, where they are, and the tactics that I use in this video, right after this. guys first of all skipjack shad herring they're in the same family the only difference is skipjack you can catch on lures all right some of them are you get up to six inches 12 inches most people catch a lot of common little ones but they are oily fish sometimes you get lucky and you get in a mess that are this size a lot of cut bait for one night fishing all right as I show on these maps it shows where most of the skipjack migrate to it's mostly Towards Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, a couple places up north. But most of what stops these fish, getting where most people need to catch them at, is dam locks. Now, a lot of people order them off the internet and fish with them in an area that don't have them. Some people have a success, some people don't. But... I would advise if it's not in your area, try to use what's local to your lake, what the fish are used to eating, and you'll probably have a little more success. All right, getting back to this skipjack herring shad. The reason that you can catch these fish is because they feed on fingerling minnows or other types of shad. Now. Uh, people mostly use Foley spoons. You can, I got a picture right here of the various types of Foley spoons. All right. A Foley spoon is the only one that I use on a casting reel because the erratic motion of it, it, it whips around everywhere, twists and turns, but Instead of using a weight at the top, I put a trolling sinker on. And depending on my area, I use a 16 foot leader line to tie it on. Or if there's a lot of rocks and I don't want it to go down in the rocks and stuff, I use a shorter 8 inch piece of line. Now, let me explain one thing. These fish are not prone to hitting one certain thing. They change. I've seen them change baits by the hour. So I carry three rods with me. I use a casting reel, a heavy spinning rod, and I carry a, a lighter spinning rod. Usually about six foot. Now, the reason I do this is there's so much casting involved in this that no matter how good a shape you're in, your back is going to start hurting. So, the two different size spinning rods I interchange. The heavier spinning rod starts hurting my back. I throw the smaller spinning rod. This is going to keep you from having to stop more and rest because the smaller spinning rod is going to give your back a little bit of a rest if you're using a heavier spinning rod. Alright, getting into the various type of lures that you can use. You can use marabou jigs, 
crappy grubs, crappy tubes, foley spoons, and some binky rigs. And if you want to throw a single one, you can usually have good luck, but I prefer to tie my everything into threes. It's a good combination. All right, when I tie these threes, I usually have two lighter lead heads at the top and a much bigger lead head at the bottom. The reason this is, is because you're going to more than likely get less tangles because the heavier lead is going to keep everything straight when you throw it. And you really get better action. You get farther distance on it. You can cover more water. But the way I rig these up, this little reel right here, it has 10 pounds Berkeley Big Game on it. And I like to run 20 in a leader line. And I put a swivel at the top. Now the only thing this 20 pound leader line does, it takes most of the blunt trauma of these, it, just in case you hook three skipjack this size on three lures, I'm going to tell you, it, it, it's pure chaos on a line but if you decide to use multiple lures you want to take into factor how far you have to space them apart because if you have doubles and triples and they're close together they'll knock the other fish off now here in Tennessee we have pretty good luck out of white and sharp truce lures most of the time and we do pretty good on them now that's not to say that color is going to do good in your area you might have to change it up a little bit but the way I tie these lures on is I use a double loop just make a loop, pass it through twice, and then pull it tight. That gives you, when you're working it, it's not stationary on, on your line, just tied in a knot. It's got more movement to it. Movement is key with these animals. They like erratic motion. Now, like I said, I carry three rods with me because they change appetite like, I don't know, that it it's crazy. They can be, like I said, hitting something 30 minutes ago and then not touch it. You just have to really stay on top of what they're hitting. Usually run a rod with a grubs, three sets, marabou jigs, and then a fully spoon. So I can change backwards and forwards without tying anything on. Because most of the time you're going to spend more time tying stuff on than you will trying to catch fish. Now, another tactic people hardly ever use that I like using is a cork popping technique and what it is you put a bigger float on the end slip float with a leader about about two foot and when you pop this it simulates them chasing a bait fish with your grub or marabou jig or something at the end of it and when they're feeding, 
this starts a feeding frenzy. When you pop that cord, it simulates them hitting and missing the fish, and the fish is trying to get away from them, which would make an, another group of fish try to get that bait from that other fish that's hit. Now, we do various techniques here because, like I said, they change constantly. And you may have to look for them pretty regularly because they can be in one place and then you go there the next day and they won't be any of them there. Uh, most people around here call them the ghost of the lake because, like I said, they're there one minute and then they're not. But if you can target them and find them where they're at, you can catch 18, 25, 30 a day. Now, let's get to the reason why most people like catching a skipjack. If you have ever used skipjack and you drop it in the clear water, if you look at the water, this fish is so oily that when you put it in the water, it looks like you drift motor oil in the water and it's separating. Now, these catfish can smell that oil and, and they love it. Or they do here in Tennessee. Now, if you go to try to buy most skipjack at a bait shop, they charge in between 5 to $9 a fish. Me, myself, I'd rather get out and have fun and just catch them. Now, all these tactics I shared are pretty much everything that I use. If you know something else that you can use, just drop a link in the comments. Give me a thumbs up if this video was informational about anything. And if you like this video, subscribe to my channel. I got plenty of hacks, plenty of information to share. Now, if you want to talk to me all the time, I have a Facebook page called Hack the Fish. We can discuss hacks, different ways to do stuff. Well, till again, this is Hack the Fish, and I'm out.